Howdy, this is going to be part two on the relationship between f, f prime, and f double prime. If you haven't watched part one and explained me, uh, explain, watched me explain how to utilize this chart, definitely go ahead and do that. Uh, but all I'm going to do, literally, we just have to look. I don't even have to write anything down whenever dealing with these types of questions, uh, as long as you have this. The answers will literally just present themselves to you. And so below right here is the graph of the derivative, okay? And so given the graph of the derivative, part A, when is f of x increasing? When is it decreasing? Your f is increasing when your derivative is above the x-axis. And your f is decreasing when f is below the x-axis. Therefore, I am increasing whenever I'm above the x-axis. So it's from 0 to 0 0.5 and then again from 2 to 3. And you're decreasing whenever you're below the x-axis. The derivative is below the x-axis between 0.5 and 2, and then from 3 to infinity. And that's it. That's when, you're that's when your function, your original, is increasing and decreasing. So let's take a look at another question. Where are the local maximum and minimum points for f of x? Okay, so I have a local max or, uh, max or min whenever f prime crosses the x-axis. So it's going to occur either here at point 0.5, 2, and 3. Now what I like to do is now that I know when I'm increasing, decreasing, you can kind of sketch out this function, right? Because if it starts here at 0, then I've got 0 0.5. And then I've got 2, and then I've got 3. In between 0 and 0 0.5, you're increasing. Between 0 0.5 and 2, you're decreasing. Between 2 and 3, you're increasing. And then between 3 and infinity, you're decreasing. And so guess what? You've got a local max here at 0.5 and 3, and then you got a local min right there at 2. So your local max is at 0 0.5 and 3. Your local minimum is at x equals 2. So now let's take a look at part C. For part C, it says, where is f of x concave up? Where is f of x concave down? Well, normally you would need the second derivative to do that. And you're like, mm, I don't know what to do. Oh, but you do. Because we have the super chart. Now, um... We're given the graph of f prime, but the relationship between f and f prime is the exact same relationship as f prime and f double prime. Now, f is concave up when the second derivative is positive, but the second derivative is positive whenever your derivative is increasing. So I'm going to be concave up when my derivative is increasing. And I'm increasing from 1.2 up to 2.35. And then I'll be concave down when my derivative is decreasing. And so that's why I'm concave down from 0 to 1.2. And then from 2.35 out to infinity. And that's it. And then finally for part D, where are the inflection points for f of x? f is going to have an inflection point when the second derivative crosses the x-axis or is equal to 0. And the second derivative is equal to 0 whenever f prime has a max or a min. Therefore, where are your inflection points? Your inflection points are here at 1.2 and 2.35. And that's it. I swear, if you can read this chart and understand it, it's going to make your life so much easier for these because you're literally not doing any work. You're looking at the chart, looking at your graph. And that's it. So go ahead and join me in part three because I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time with the second derivative.